Hey folks, in this interview, it's all about Affinity Photo. This is Twit. Hey everyone, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I am your host, Frederick Van Johnson. I've been trying to do this interview for a long time. Um, the, the This Week in Photo audience, the Twit Pro community, Folks all over the planet have been raving about Affinity and Affinity Photo as a viable alternative to the Creative Cloud workflow or the Creative Cl Cloud monthly billing, and, you know, and obviously Photoshop. And also, people are raving about their implementation of Affinity Photo on the iPad or on mobile. So I finally got someone from Serif, the company that makes Affinity Photo, to come on and just give us the real deal about this amazing software. Ash, <laughs> Ash Houston is here, um, is straight from across the pond to talk to yeah. us. How are you doing, you all right? Yeah, yeah. What time? What time is it over there? It's uh, it's it's about nine fifteen a.m. here in in California. Yeah, it's like it's like quarter past five here. So not too bad. Yeah, not, not too, too bad. Not too bad. I'm not. Yeah, I'm almost holding you from the pub, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll be straight there as soon as we're done. <laughs> well, great. So, Ash, you are the managing director over at Serif, right? And uh, so, first of all, what does a managing director do at a company like Serif? Uh, well, I mean, well, basically, I'm the boss. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I guess over there you sort of call me a CEO, but but in the UK, managing director is normally the, uh, the the guy who's sort of head of the board, uh, so to speak. So, uh, so yeah, I, I effectively run the company. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so I have the right person for feature requests you on do. the line. <laughs> <laughs> you do, indeed, yeah. Okay, let's start. Uh, I want to make sure we use your time uh, appropriately because this is this is a. Uh, I think a very important interview because like, like I said, I said it sort of tongue in cheek in the intro there, but, uh, but Affinity Photo in particular has been on the minds of lots of photographers around the world, as I'm sure you know from your, your marketing data. What, so for the folks that may not have heard about Affinity Photo, what is the application? What is it, what is it designed for? Who's, it tar who's its target market? Well, I mean, Affinity Photo is, is a professional photo editing um, application so i mean we, we developed it very much with the kind of the creative professional and the professional photographer uh, in mind um, and everything that we kind of did you know from from the very sort of beginnings of of, of how we went about developing it uh, was very much sort of targeting uh, that audience so it kind of ranges from everything from doing you know relatively straightforward um image enhancements on images uh, to raw uh, raw development and processing uh, right through to really kind of advanced sort of multi-layered complex uh, compositions with loads of adjustments and effects and and all that type of thing um i mean frankly i mean the easiest way uh, to uh, to talk about it, not that we like talking about it so much in this way uh, all the time, is, is that it does pretty much everything that, that that you can do in Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah, obviously, yeah, it is. It is like I was saying in the intro. It's a for a lot of people, it's a, a highly viable, highly capable Photoshop alternative. So on that, just just speaking to the people that are looking at it. Um, I see, and I'm generalizing here, right? There, there, there are multiple camps of people, but generally speaking, there are people that have been using Photoshop forever. They love it. Their, you know, muscle memory for keystrokes is built in. And then there are people that are relatively new to to Photoshop. Can we speak to both of those crowds? Like on the on the veteran Photoshop user side, how hard is it to transition from say Photoshop over to Affinity um, Photo? And then on the other side, the novice side. Why should they consider coming to Affinity Photo versus, you know, the 300 pound gorilla industry standard that is Photoshop? Sure. Well, I think that the, um, you know, so talking from a veteran Photoshop uh, standpoint, I mean, actually, the, the transition and what we're finding with our customers who have transitioned um, is that it's actually very straightforward. I mean, you know, lots of the things that, that you'd be used to in Photoshop, um, you know, you'll find very familiar in, in Affinity Photo. So, you know, very straightforward things like all, all of the main tools that you'll be used to uh, are positioned down the left hand side. You've got lots of panels on the right hand side for things like your layers and your colors and your swatches and uh, and that type of stuff. Uh, so the general layout is, is something that, that, that people be familiar with. Of course, not just in Photoshop, but in uh, you know nearly any kind of photo editing uh, applications. Um, of course, there are various things that we do 
um, differently, but I don't think there's anything that that is particularly, um, you know, take, takes they're, they're very long really for people to kind of pick up if they are used to using um, something like Photoshop. I mean, you mentioned things like memory, mani- um, a sort of muscle memory for for keyboard shortcuts and what have you. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of the shortcuts are just. Uh, fundamentally the same you know like you hit b for the brush tool and you hit e for the eraser and you hit v for uh the 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 the, the select tool so um you know that these are things that are just inbred not just in a, uh you know photoshop of course but in in, in lots of applications so yeah. of course uh, we, we're pretty much standard on lots of those things, things like alt drag to, to to copy and paste and shift to constrain aspect ratio and what have you. Um, but you know, all of that said, um, you know, we you know for something like that, we do have fully customizable keyboard shortcuts. So um, if there is anything that people are um, you know particularly used to, um, which, which uh, you know in whatever application they might be using um, that perhaps isn't set up by default in Affinity Photo, um, you know, all of those things are fully customizable, so you can actually get it you know, working in the way that, that you're used to um, and, and the way that you would like. Um, I think from a, uh, from a sort of a, a, a more new user um, standpoint, or maybe someone who doesn't have uh, experience uh, with, uh, with something like Photoshop, I, th- I think the, the main uh, advantage, I think, with Affinity Photo is, is that um, we – We've tried to kind of keep it lean and mean. Uh, we've not kind of, you know, we've really focused, I think, on, on, on the core features that I think that people really want, the core features and the tools. Um, and we've tried to strip out all of the bloat and all the unnecessary um, stuff. So, and I think that fundamentally um, makes the application a lot a lot easier uh, and a lot quicker uh, to kind of uh, pick up because it's it's just not as as daunting. I mean, the other thing that we've kind of done uh, with the user interface is that we've organised a lot of the tools into what we call personas. So there's a main editing persona, there's a, a liquify persona, a raw development persona. Um, and so because we've kind of organised our UI in that way, um, again, I think it it means that we, we kind of focus all the tools that are available to the job in hand uh, rather than lots of tools being buried beneath lots of flyouts, you know what I mean, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, I think that is is something that certainly people find, uh, uh, you know, that we, which kind of makes it a lot more accessible, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's missing a lot of the, uh, I mean, just by virtue of not being, or coming to the party when you guys came to the party, you don't have the, you know, the, the tr- not track record, but the legacy of, of features that were sort of accumulated along the way, which is, you know, which is awesome. Okay, so let's just rewind a little bit. Um, I want to get into the sort of the inception of Serif, the company, and Affinity Photo in particular, the, the, the software comes into the, the photography space at a time where it's crowded, right? Mm. There's both, there's, you know, thousands and thousands, if not more, mobile apps out there coming out more every day, n- both niche and broad focused on the, mm. the, the desktop side. We've got more players than ever before. We've got Skyloom with Luminar. Of course, we've got Photoshop. We've got you guys. There are more, which is great for us photographers, but it's also bad for us photographers photographers because you know we can't choose right as you know photographers are indecisive and fickle so where tell, talk a little bit about the inception of affinity photo as a, in, from the standpoint of entering into an already crowded party well i think it's impossible really to talk about that without actually talking about the, the whole concept of the of the full suite. Um, because really the, um, I mean, rewinding a long time, you know, I mean, Serif's actually been around for uh, over 30 years. We were actually yeah. founded in 1987. Um, and, you know, initially we, uh, uh, you know, we've always been in the kind of the, the creative software space. So doing desktop publishing, photo editing, vector design. Um, but... Um, all of the old applicants, we call them our legacy applications now, uh, those applications that we first developed uh, were very much kind of focused towards the home user um, and, um, you know, the, the sort of the casual user. Um, the whole concept behind Affinity, and this comes from a vision from our lead developer, Tony Brightman, um, nearly 10 years ago now, was that, um, you know, we, uh, he, he kind of felt that if he had the opportunity to um, start 
uh, from from scratch, you know, throw all of the code that we'd written away. Um, you know, he'd be able to build something really special that kind of took advantage of all of the latest hardware technologies that were available, uh, not have to worry about all of those legacy features and bloat, you know, that we j just spoke about um, that are built up in the old applications, um, but also fundamentally focus uh, th this new range of applications on the on the um, uh, sort of creative professional, the the, 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 the professional photographer. Um, but really, that whole vision was very much about a creative suite um, that we would have um, an application for photo editing, one for vector design, and one for page layout or, or, or desktop publishing. Um, and, you know, kind of one of the unique things about that suite was that we would make it that they worked together totally seamlessly. So one of the unique things about our suite is that they all share exactly the same file format. Um, because I think that one of the one of the main pain points really for, for creatives is, you know, um, you know, lots of people use Photoshop, but they also use Photoshop in conjunction with Illustrator, in conjunction with InDesign. Um, and, you know, one of the, 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 the pain points for sure is that, you know, you, you're constantly having to, if you, if you want to say, edit an image to then place it in InDesign, um, you generally kind of have to then export it, um, you know, flatten it um, in, in, in Photoshop before you do that. And certainly that's the case in and illustrator and what have you. But what we wanted to do was, um, you know, make that whole process of, uh, of, of working between the apps as seamlessly um, as we could. So really the vision for Affinity was much more around um, the whole creative suite rather than specifically, um, you know, around the photo editing thing. And in terms of the, 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 uh, the, the uh, you know, how crowded the space is actually, with people developing a whole creative suite like what we've done, it's not crowded at all. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, for sure, there's lots of photo editing apps, as you mentioned, lots of single-use things, lots of more full-featured things. Um, but no one's got, I think, the breadth of the of the whole suite, and that's really the solution that we wanted to uh, that, that we're aiming for, and, and, and is where I think puts us in a quite unique position. I love that. I, I had no idea that the the, the, the file format was was compatible across the suite right so that mm -hmm. that is huge yeah you're right it's, it's been yeah. a world of export and flatten and import or make concessions you know then that's just been part of the world and i think a lot of people creative creatives and and content designers you know never really thought about that because it's just sort of you know it's gravity it's the way the world works right and you guys are changing that yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, if, if you think about what that means, I mean, you know, let's say you, you design some real sharp vector illustration in Affinity Designer, um, but then you might want to do something like, you know, in simple terms, you might want to apply a motion blur to that. Right. And, and ordinarily, that type of filter wouldn't be available in, in a, in, in a uh, vector illustration app. Um, but what you can then do is you can then just open that design that you've done in Affinity Photo. All your layers, uh, all of your objects, everything, that, you know, all your shapes and curves and everything that you've done in Affinity Designer are all available in your layers panel in Affinity Photo. It's exactly the same. Um, but then you can select one of those layers and actually apply a motion blur. But even things like our motion blur are actually non-destructive. So I can actually um, add that even to a vector layer. Um, and then I can save it again and open it in Affinity designer mm. and then add more vectors to it um so yeah it, it's this kind of seamless sort of way of working that there's a, there's a massive part of what we do i love that as an ecosystem so so mm. how does how does mobile play into that ash you know the you know a lot of companies i would argue most companies have established this whole mobile first strategy where they're going to where the audiences are and the audiences are on mobile phones and tablets and you know everything in in between what's what's the what's the surf strategy when it comes to mobile well i mean fundamentally our, our main I mean, it was interesting, actually, when we very first started talking about uh, Affinity, uh, one of the things from the start, and, and, you know, got to give massive credit for Tony, uh, to Tony for this, was that we wanted to make sure it built on iPad. Um, because we always felt that iPad or, you know, uh, a t tablet device like that was was had the potential um, to be incredible uh, to, for uh, any kind of creative experience or photo editing experience. Um, so that was actually always in our minds that, you know, the, the, the back end of our apps 
um, as we were developing it, even though initially we only launched on Mac, um, as we were developing that, we would be constantly compiling it um, and building it um, on on iPad 2 to sort of validate that it could render, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 work that people were creating. Um, but it was funny that even that 10 years ago, you know, Tony was sort of saying to us, well, it will become a great creative device, um, but only when um, uh, they beef up the power um, mm -hmm. that's available to us, the amount of CPU cores, et cetera, um, and only when it's got a really good stylus. Um, and, of course, you know, the thing that really then sort of changed the game for us, and I think generally uh, for, you know, our, our types of applications was, of course, when Apple launched iPad Pro uh, with Apple Pencil, um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it does become a credible device for creating things from scratch um, uh, for professional output. Um, so, I mean, our... Our strategy, I think, is um, still very much focused on, uh, on on iPad. We think that you know iPad with pencil in particular um, is something where you can uh, achieve nearly everything uh, you can do um, on on a desktop. Um, you know, that, that, say a creative professional would want to do. Mm -hmm. um, we're not really looking at phone. Um, because I really think that phone is, uh, you know, much more for, you know, kind of one click wonder type filter effects and, yeah. um, and, and sort of things like that. It's not really necessarily the type of thing that, um, that say hardcore Photoshop users, for example, um, would, would want to be doing. Um, so, you know, you still need the ability to work with, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of layers and, um, and all that type of stuff. And I, and I just think that at the moment a phone, you know, both because of the real estate that's available to you on a phone screen, uh, but also, frankly, because of the chipsets that are in phones, um, you know, can't necessarily handle the, you know, the, the massive files that I think that, um, you know, people want to work on nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you, you hit it right in the head. It makes sense to, to be on a larger screen with faster processors, with a pen or a pencil interface, to, you know, to, to touch sensitive um, pen interface to get in there. Um, what about interoperability between the the iOS version or the mobile version and the desktop version? You mentioned that you mentioned that common file format between Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Does that extend to mobile as well? In other words, can I start an idea on my iPad, uh, save it to some cloud service or whatever, and bring it down to my desktop to finish it off? Absolutely. I mean, that, that was again one of our fundamental principles. I mean, actually, as it happens. The entire back end of Affinity Photo is exactly the same uh, on uh, Windows, on Mac, and on iPad. Uh, the only thing that's different is um, about 20% of the app, which is basically the UI layer. Um, so, of course, for iPad, we had to totally rethink the UI, make it focused for touch, understand gestures, and all the other stuff um, that, that you kind of want when you're working on a mobile device. But fundamentally, that the core engine behind it is actually exactly the same as that on Mac and Windows. Um, so that means a couple of things. It means that, number one, uh, the iPad version has all of the features and all of the functionality of the desktop version. We haven't compromised at all. Um, uh, so... Uh, Everything that you can do on a desktop, you can actually do on iPad. And the second thing is, is that the file format is identical. So, yeah, uh, even if I've got some big 100 megapixel image with uh, 100 layers and all different adjustment layers and filter layers and whatever it might be, um, I can actually open that on my iPad um, and all of those layers and everything are, are still there available to me to edit. And I can make some changes on an iPad and then, I can, you know, when if, I'm, if I'm out and about or on the bus or whatever, um, and then when I come back to my uh, studio, uh, I can then uh, load it back onto my desktop machine. So that's not a one-way trip. Just to just to be clear, that's a two-way trip. So I can <clears throat> I can start on my iPad, move to the desktop when it's convenient, make some changes. Then I'm on the train again. I can open up that same file, add some text or whatever, bring it in Designer, whatever I want, and just sort of bounce back and forth until I'm finished. Absolutely, one hundred percent. You don't lose anything by doing that. Nothing gets flattened. Nothing gets scaled down on resolution. Um, it's exactly the same file and there's full integrity uh, as, as you swap between uh, between the two things and and of course that even applies to 
you know, we've got Affinity Designer on iPad too. Uh, so um, you can be working on an Affinity Photo file in on, on iPad. You can then just drag and drop that with iOS 11 functionality onto Affinity Designer on iPad. You can then carry on adding some vectors and other kind of stuff to it. You can then drag it back to Affinity Photo. Then you can open it on your Mac if you wanted. To, you know, there's literally no uh, no restriction to that uh, interoperability. It is exactly the same file format uh, that's maintained throughout. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, okay, let's let's switch gears yet again and talk about digital asset management. So mm-hmm. I mentioned in the beginning the, the this week in photo audiences, many of them um, and the, our community have been raving about the alternative to the creative cloud in some ways. Creative cloud's great. People that love it, love it, are in it forever. But then there are people, there's a faction, a growing faction of people that are looking for alternatives. And your software, Affinity Photo in particular, seems to be what they're sort of gravitating to much because mainly because of, you know, you said there's, you know, that the power and the similarities to Photoshop without the, without the subscription price. But then there's Mm -hmm. the other, the other shoot, the other leg of that pant, right. Is the digital asset management side. So usually Mm -hmm. at least traditionally it's been Lightroom Photoshop. And now it seems to be, you know, for those people, affinity photo and capture one, Mm-hmm. Is that what you're seeing? And does and does Serif have any plans to sort of pull some of that market back from Capture One and create a digital asset management app? Yeah, I mean, we've been very seriously looking at it. Um, and in fact, we, we have even started doing some work uh, on, a, on an asset management uh, app. You know, it's something that we get asked all the time. Uh, and to be honest with you, we've been saying for a couple of years that we're looking at it. Um, uh, we haven't uh, got a huge way down the line uh, with it so far, but it is very much on our radar as something that we, uh, that we want to do. We certainly understand that it's kind of a a missing piece Mm -hmm. um, of the puzzle. Uh, You know, I mean, I think, you know, I think like right now, frankly, um, a lot of our, you know, a a lot of the the people using affinity photo are perhaps more, um, Uh, more on the kind of the creative side than necessarily the photographer side. Um, I mean, sure, I mean, Affinity, you know, if you wanted to do a real detailed retouch on a single image, you know, where where you actually spend two or three hours on it or whatever, then of course Affinity Photo is perfect. If you're like a wedding photographer and you go out and take, you know, 500 images at a wedding and then you just want to apply, um, you know, batch apply a a, 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 a single adjustment to all of them or whatever, then, um, you know, you can kind of do that in Affinity Photo, but obviously it's nowhere near as efficient as um, necessarily doing it uh, through uh, a dam um, you know, or also, you know if you want to kind of skip through and sort of star rate or flag things that need to be um, adjusted you know all that kind of standard management stuff obviously we don't have any of that um, so we certainly know that that's a big thing um, you know especially for um, you know pro photographers uh, that, um, that that we offer because everyone needs that and you're right um, if people are coming off Creative Cloud um, and swapping to Affinity Photo, um, they are generally using, and this is what we're finding too, Capture One. Um, so, um, yeah, it is it is something that, that, that I'm sure we're going to do. It's just very hard at the moment to kind of, you know, specifically give a timeline of when that's going to come about. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good to hear that it's on your radar, and that's uh, that's encouraging because I, I think when people sort of, fall, is particularly photographers, when we fall in love with an application, we kind of want to standardize on that application, you sure. know, and the way that that application sort of thinks across our workflow as well. Yeah. Um, Ash, what about what about raw processing? That's the other big mm-hmm. question that comes up. You know, there's a you know as the new cameras are introduced. Every other day, it feels like, you know, there's a there's a new raw processor, a new raw format that needs to be supported. What's the what's the serif strategy for staying up to date on those those new cameras? And so that the photographers that, you know, choose to standardize on your software aren't sort of waiting for support. How does that work? Well, I mean, actually, we use a um, I mean, there's a that it works. I mean, we've got sort of two main uh, 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 engines, if you like, for our raw processors. So um, we, we actually uh, access, well, so for people who are on uh, Mac, for example, uh, we give you the option to either use Apple's own uh, raw, um, you know, uh, file interpreter, if you like, mm-hmm. uh, or, or our own inbuilt one. Now, our own inbuilt one, uh, you know, we, we tend to push updates to it every few months. Um, so, 
you know, we, we do manage to stay really quite up to date, but it's, it's not it's not necessarily as uh, instantly up to date as potentially we would like. It is something that we're starting to to look more into about how we can sort of, you know, as soon as a new camera um, is launched, that we've kind of got that uh, file support. And some of this is going to, you know, involves actually building better relations, I think, now with, um, you know, with the, with the main camera manufacturers too, you know, yeah. so we kind of get get, the, get those kind of heads up um, of, of, of sort of what's coming. And of course, I think that that was perhaps tricky for us to do like a few years ago but obviously now um as the apps become a lot more adopted or whatever uh, those are relationships that um you know uh, you know it's obviously in the, in the camera manufacturers interest too uh, so uh, uh, the, those relationships are becoming easier to uh, to make I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a big one for, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's 50, 50, right? Cause if, if you are, if you have a brand new camera and you're one of those people that have just purchased, of course the world revolves around you and you want everything to support your, your new camera. But yeah. there are millions of people that just have cameras that they've been shooting with forever and they love those and those are likely fully supported. So yeah, I, I understand it's a, it's a challenge. Um, the last question here, last sort of, sort of winding down the interview, the, you know, and sort of back to the the Photoshop conversation or the comparison with Photoshop. Pointed question here: What what's missing in Photoshop that is present in Affinity Photo? In a, you know, in other words, you know, to, to put a really sharp knife on it from a mar putting on your marketing guy's hat, right? If if you were to have that conversation with someone at the cocktail party and they're they're on the fence and they're considering one or the other, what would be the the leading sort of convincing phrase that we, you would use to lure someone over from the Photoshop ecosystem into Affinity? Um, mm, so I. I, I I mean, there's probably a couple of answers to this question. I mean, sure. but I, I, I think perhaps the uh, the first main one is is, uh, is performance. Um, and uh, I think in particular with our 1.7 launch, which has got some massive performance improvements on it. Um, one of the things that we really kind of try and pride ourselves on, and certainly 1.7 takes this to another level, actually, um, is that everything that you do, all edits that you do, whether it be applying adjustment layers or even things like filter effects, like blurs or lighting or, you know, uh, distortions and that sort of stuff, all happen live. And you, you see that on the entire um, document all the time. You know, quite often in Photoshop, I mean, even something like, I don't know, if you do a radial blur, um, you actually just kind of get like a small little dialogue with a little preview mm -hmm. uh, in it. Uh, whereas with us, you see it entirely on your entire document. Um, and, and and that also means, um, you know, let's say you've kind of got adjustment layers above uh, above things. And, you know, let's say simply you've turned an image into black and white. Um, you know, often in Photoshop, you'd actually be seeing the preview just on the base layer, still seeing it in color. Um, whereas for us, you actually see it as it's currently looking with all the adjustments sort of above it. So um, I think the fact that um, everything is live um, when you're applying these things and you're seeing it in place on the entire document um, is, uh, is, is probably one of the biggest things. Um, and, but, but that actually kind of applies to other stuff as well. Like, for example, um, our raw development, um, it doesn't pop up in a separate window. Um, it happens on document, um, on, on, on the image that you're working on um, in the main workspace. You do flick to a different persona, but it, 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 like I say, it's not popping up in a separate window liquefy um you know if you're actually um you know melting or uh, re-sculpting something uh let, and let's say it's a multi-layer document um in photoshop if you were to do that uh, you actually go off into a window where you only see this the, the 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 layer that you're editing whereas with us you actually see that layer that you're editing but in context you know but you're still seeing the whole rest of your composition underneath it so and of course stuff like that's vital if you're actually say melting uh, something over the edge of something that's on a different layer you need to be able to see all the layers beneath it so um so yeah so i think that that's maybe a couple of things that i'd say i love that i love that. that that those are huge things you know just sort of the idea of editing in context like i said a lot of us are used to planetary gravity of those those sort of dialogue boxes that pop up and allow us to make adjustments then we commit and boom they are applied to the image i love the idea of being able to do that in 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 on like you said in document there yeah. and oh. have it live yeah and I've, I've just got to mention one other thing yeah um because actually this is something you know we, we kind of take it for granted but it's something that um you know actually uh, people think wow this is just totally new and different um is that 
you know, with Affinity Photo, you don't have to rely on converting things to smart objects all the time uh, to, to, to maintain, um, you know, full pixel resolution. So um, a very simple example of that is if you've got a few layers and then you, you pick, the, say, the top layer and then you resize it down um, and then you click off that layer and then do something else. With Affinity Photo, it doesn't keep popping up and asking you, are you sure you want to apply this transformation? Um, because the reason for that is, is that, even if you know a hundred steps down the line you go back to that layer that you've scaled right down to be really small and then blow it back up again it's still got all of that pixel data that it had initially so um whenever you're kind of just going around and applying little transformations and moving things around or whatever um, you're not constantly interrupted thinking do i really want to do this because it's going to re-rasterize it and i'm going to lose that you know uh, that, that that pixel data that i had before um so i think that um, you know, that just stops your workflow, you know, be, being interrupted all the time by having to make those decisions or, or, you know, having to go and create smart objects and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's huge. Yeah. It, again, a change in gravity, right? <laughs> we're, we're used to, when, with the introduction of smart objects, everyone was over the moon because it meant resolution independence and I'm, I'm mm. not sacrificing quality when I scale an asset and you're telling me you can forget about all that because it is going back to the original bits whenever you make a change and you don't yeah. have to worry about it. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, in Ash, okay, just to wrap this up, what what is next for, to the obviously you can't you know, talk about unreleased products, services, etc. Uh, but I have to ask. So, what, yeah, what sure. is what's next for Affinity Photo? What, what features or direction can fans of the application expect to uh, to see in the next release? Well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, actually, I can talk about this because um, we've got 1.7 coming up um, that will be launched in the next uh, sort of couple of months. Okay. Um, and it's currently in a public beta anyway, so uh, there's nothing particularly secret about what's, what's coming up in it. And um, perhaps one of the big things, as I've already alluded to, is uh, performance improvements. Now, some of this is, you know, particularly uh, noticeable on Mac. So one of the things that we've done on Mac um, is um, took advantage of uh, GPU or, or metal compute acceleration and this means that any mac that's got a discrete graphics card which of course is all the latest iMacs, latest uh, macbook pros you know if you've kind of got like a vega 64 graphics card or something um the performance improvements are just ridiculous it's like you know 10 times 20 mm. times uh, levels of performance improvement um you know b because of that so um i think one of the big things is certainly um uh, performance improvements. Uh, we've kind of got other stuff coming, like um, you know the brush engine's been totally rewritten, so you can now have multiple brush nozzles, and you can do some really cool stuff with that. Um, we've totally rewritten a lot of processing, um, so we've now got much better noise reduction, uh, better white balance correction. Uh, raw file processing generally is uh, is many times faster than what it was before, um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think uh, what else. I mean, we've actually, um, on, on the iPad version, we, we've kind of uh, dramatically improved uh, keyboard support. So, mm. um, you know, before you could never do, um, you know, some of the uh, modifier kind of shortcuts um, you, you couldn't do, like, you know, all, all drag to copy and paste and whatever. We've added all of those things in. We've added customizable shortcuts uh, in the iPad version. We're actually hoping to get tethered shooting on the iPad version, um, at least for certain camera manufacturers, um, which will be pretty cool. Uh, oh, and I'm trying to think where else. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've kind of probably got maybe 20 or 30 pretty big uh, new features that we're adding to, to, to the 1.7 version. That's crazy. And you, and you said the 1.7 version is, is, as we record this, it's uh, the 24th of April. What are, what are we looking at, a month or so? Uh, yeah, we're sort of looking for, you know, sort of six to eight eight weeks, something like that, um, assuming everything kind of goes to plan. So, um, you know, we're June, just in kind of June time frame, maybe? Yeah, June, June time frame, hopefully. Um, we're kind of in the last stage of the, of the beta now. Uh, so, and at the moment, everything's looking in pretty good shape. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be uh, be there around that sort of time, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, so here, here's here's the, the last pointed question for you, and that's the, uh, so I asked you where Affinity Photo was going. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's going places, lots of stuff going on. But what about Serif as a company? Looking at the product line or looking at some of the apps that you guys put out right now, we've got Affinity Photo, obviously. Um, you released Affinity Designer, both iPad and on the desktop, and we have parity of features there. 
for me at least, selfishly, since I have you on the hot seat, what about Affinity Video and skating to that area? Are we going to see any apps in the video sort of content creation area? I mean, I, th I think, you know, uh, I, I'd have to say never say never. But, I mean, fundamentally, uh, I mean, coming back to what I said before, um, our apps share exactly the same back ends. And, and that also, you know, obviously our next big launch after 1.7 uh, is Affinity Publisher. Um, so that's our desktop publishing app. So that's really the next big thing. But even that shares the same back end um, and, and the same file format, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, between you know photo and designer um i think the thing for us is that as soon as you start talking about video or audio editing um you know that requires a totally different uh sort of you know back-end technology i guess you could say yeah, uh, yeah. And, and would almost require us developing that from scratch we couldn't leverage a lot of the work that we've already done um and so like i say uh, i wouldn't say we'll never ever do it but i mean it's certainly not in any kind of you know, uh, even medium or well, it's not in any sort of hands at the moment. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think for us, uh, we want to get our suite complete in the, our initial suite complete in the sense of getting publisher out. Um, then, as we already spoke about, we, we, we certainly got Dam on our you know an asset management app on our radar. Um, but that's kind of as far as we're going at the moment. Got it. Got it. Ash Houston, any uh, any parting thoughts or, or parting comments you'd like to share with the TWIP audience before I let you go? Uh, not well. I mean, you know, what I'd like you all to do is, is to is to not not just necessarily focus on photo, but actually, you know, if you're in any way kind of creatively minded, I, I think the real power of what we do, uh, as 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 we have of course touched on, is is the offering of the whole suite. Um, and, uh, you know, right now we've got Affinity Publisher in beta um, and, and we're also looking to get as many people uh, trying that out as, as, as we possibly can, too. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I love it. Love it. Ash, thank you so much for your time today. Your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, my head is spinning. You know, I, I'm familiar, obviously, with, with the, the apps that you guys put out, but I didn't have that level of detail. And now everyone does, <laughs> you know, the oh. level of sort of parody. The biggest, I think my, one of my biggest takeaways is the, the fact that you guys have taken a fresh look at image processing and sort of done it with today's standards in mind without worrying about legacy performance and parity as well as that single file format across all the apps i think that's that's huge so congratulations on that yeah thanks man yeah it's been good to talk to you all right ash from serif affinity photo affinity designer and affinity publisher check them out uh where where should people go to download these obviously the app store uh any other places where you'd like them to go to get more information about these apps yeah, well, I mean, just go to our website. It's just affinity.serif.com uh, and, uh, and everything's on there. Yeah, for sure. All right. Perfect. All right, Ash Houston, thank you so much. I appreciate you. This is Twitter.